Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> so last time we started talking about uh, EIGRP, and we said that uh, EIGRP has three major differences when it comes to route updates. So routes are uh, uh, route updates are triggered, which means uh, event-based. They are not periodic in nature, um, and they are bounded. Uh, uh, and that, that's the details regarding the, uh, the triggered route updates. So for triggered route updates, uh, we have conditions based on which we have to send the update because it's event-based. It's not any more uh, uh, periodic. So um, one of these conditions is the fact that the interface, change, the interface changes the state which means that one of the interfaces here, uh, the interface becomes on or off. So when the interface becomes off, for example, this means that the network here is disconnected, which means that we should trigger an update to update the, uh, all the other routers that uh, this interface has gone down or this interface has come up and so on. Also, route becomes unreachable. If, if, um, if I send... Uh, uh, if I don't receive route updates from uh, a specific uh, port for quite a very long time, uh, then, or, or I try to uh, send a packet to this, um, uh, to this network, for example, and I never hear back from this network, then after quite some time, after a very long time, a timeout, then um, I may actually declare this remote network as unreachable, okay? So in that case, uh, I should trigger a route update. All route is placed in the routing table. So if there is a, a new one of the, uh, of the routers placed a new route in the routing table, then uh, this router uh, will, will have to trigger a route update to update all the other routers. So in other words, if there is any change if there is any change, and these are examples of, that, of, uh, of what uh, that change might be, okay? Um, in that case, only I can send the route update, and as we said, the route update is, uh, is partial, which means that I send only uh, uh, the information about the change that happens. I don't blindly send the entire routing table. I send partial update, and I send this update bounded, which means that I inform only the routes, or I inform only the, the neighbors who are affected by this change. Okay? Uh, as we have uh, discussed before, that in this vector routing protocols in general, there may uh, be routing loops. And routing loops uh, talks about the condition in which the packet itself continuously gets transmitted amongst these uh, routers repeatedly, okay? Uh, and it almost never, of course, after quite uh, some time, it will be dropped, but uh, uh, it will continuously go into loops without reaching the final destination. And the main cause of, of these routing, uh, routing loops is the fact that the routing tables become inconsistent the routing tables become inconsistent. The, the example here talks about one of the scenarios that may cause uh, 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 routing groups. Okay, so this, this scenario here talks about one of the uh, uh, conditions uh, or one of the forms where a routing group might happen. Well, what, 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 uh, what happens here is that this um, destination network this network 10.4.0.0 went down. Okay? So this network has gone down. So let's see uh, 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 what that change might uh, imply and might cause, and how does that, uh, 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 or how might that create uh, routing loops? Well, if if we assume, of course, that the dynamic routing uh, protocols, they will not do that, but if we assume that if this network goes down, then naturally what I can think of is that this router might, a, 
remove uh, this route from the routing table because the network does not exist anymore, right? Because uh, this router here indicates in the routing table that uh, 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 this, like here, it indicates that this route does not exist. So it will remove it. Okay. So, well, that, that might be understandable. So let's see what this might cause. Well, after quite some, after some time, when uh, the periodic update uh, uh, becomes in effect, router 2 will do what? Router 2 will send, assuming that we're not here talking about EIGRP, we're talking about distant vector router protocols in general. And in that case, what we normally do when the route update becomes in effect, we get all the routing table, and as we said before, we increment this hop by one to indicate that uh, you can reach the destination through me with one incremented hop, right? So route two will send a route update, which is this one, okay, to router 3. And this route update will have, okay, router 2 will tell router 3, you can reach 10.2.0.0, which is this one, through me, with a hub count of 1. That's normal. You can reach 10.3.0.0, which is this one, through me, with a hub count of 1. Of course, here I have 10.3.0.0 with a hub count of 0, so I will not bother. I will ignore that, right? Then 10.1.0.0 with a, with a hub count of a 2, bro. So 10.1.0.0, which is this one, right? With a hub count of 2, so that makes sense. So uh, you will have to go through R2 and then from R2 to R1. So that makes sense. So, and then 10.4.0.0 with a hub count of a 2. 2. So, so this means what? This means that you can reach 10.4.0.0 through me with a hub count of 2. So, in that case, Router 3 will, in fact, accept this route update, okay, and will insert here 10.4.0.0 with a hub count of 2, because I have removed this entry completely from the table, okay? So that doesn't make sense, but this is how the protocol will work. Okay, so what does this cause? This will simply cause the following. If router 1 tries to send with a destination address of 10.4.0.0, what will happen is that router 1 will send, will forward this to router 2. Because in, in the routing table here, router 1 has uh, the entry 10.4.0.0 through this interface with a hub count of 1. So this route entry will be activated and I will forward this to R2. R2 will then search the table and it will find that 10.4.0.0 is connected on this port with a hub count of 1. So it will send it here. And this will have to go through this port with a hub count of 2. So it will send it here. And then the, the packet will keep transmitted back and forth. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how a routing loop might be uh, caused or might, might happen. Of course, uh, there are multiple ways to mitigate and try to resolve uh, routing loops in general. There are two, four different methods which we will uh, discuss uh, now. Um, so again, remember that what caused this is the fact that when, when, when the network became down, I have removed the routing entry from the table. So that's one mistake I did. 
The second mistake is that routing to sent a route update for a destination address which was connected to router uh, 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 three, which also does not make sense because router two should not inform router three about networks that are directly connected to router three or, or were directly connected to router three. So that's the second mistake we did. The third mistake is that router three, in fact, accepted this route update. Okay, by mistake. So these are uh, the, the, the mistakes that we have done here which caused the routing loop to happen. I'm mentioning these uh, uh, three reasons because we'll take this as the base to, a, to try to fix that. So, um, so first, routing loops may be caused by the fact that the, uh, uh, the network administrator incorrectly configures the static routes, okay? So a network administrator, uh, of course, for static routing, the network administrator is the one who, who configures the router. Uh, then by mistake, the, the network administrator may in fact configure these routes incorrectly, which will cause routing loops. Or incorrectly configured route distribution, which is the route updates that we just talked about. So route updates have been distributed, okay? Uh, uh, and router two informs router three about a destination network, which one second ago, it was actually connected directly to router three. So this is incorrect route, route distribution. Slow conversions, because we're not using triggered updates. It would have been really nice that once router 3 loses connection to this network, it should inform others that this network is down before it has to wait for router 2 to send the periodic updates to router 3, then router, router 3 will accept it. That's the slow conversion we're talking about because if a network goes down, if router 3 had informed router 2 that now 10.4.0.0 network is down, right? And forces router 2 to remove this entry from its table, then this problem would have never happened. But we have relied on the slow conversions using the periodic updates, and router 3 did not inform anyone because the route update came after. And unfortunately, the route update from R2 came to R3, which caused this problem. So the slow conversions is one of the uh, problems that might cause the uh, routing loops. And incorrectly configured discard routes. The fact that R3 incorrectly removed or discarded the route from the routing table without doing anything special this is also uh, one of the reasons for causing this uh, uh, routing loops. Type. What is the implication of the routing loops? Well, the implication is simply the fact that the packets will, uh, uh, will be routed incorrectly in the network, which will cause the fact that the packet will go in the network for a very, very long time for no reason. Right? So this might cause what? This might cause the fact that the network resources will be wasted because this packet requires some bandwidth on the link to be transmitted. So I'm wasting this bandwidth, right? Because I have to transmit these packets unnecessarily. Whereas I should in fact realize that this packet will never reach the destination. So instead of going into loops, I have to either take another route to reach the destination or I have to drop it altogether. But what I have done instead is that I kept it actually in the network for a very, very long time. So that consumes bandwidth. That also consumes CPU time because every time 
the packet goes into the router, the router needs to consume some CPU time to, a, to process the packet, right? And look up the routing table and find where the route that it should use to send the packet and so on. So it has to do all this packet forwarding procedure for no reason, right? Because the packet has been routed uh, incorrectly. The network conversions is in fact degraded in, 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 in that case. Why? Because, because of the fact that this incorrect forwarding of the packet may in fact uh, uh, affect the bandwidth badly to the extent that it, it starts to affect the route updates. Because the route updates might be sent uh, 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 periodically every now and then, and the bandwidth of the, of the, of the network becomes used or, or uh, uh, used unnecessarily, which might cause some of these route updates to be lost, uh, 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 or do not reach to the other side, and so on. And if route updates are affected, then conversions is affected, okay? And you may cause even uh, 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 further or more uh, routing loops, okay? So routing loops is in fact very bad, very expensive. So we need to avoid it as much as possible. Uh, and this happens specifically for distant vector routing protocols because of the fact that I do not have end-to-end -end path. I don't know the topology of the network. I don't have a vision on the end-to-end -end path where the packet should go through. So one of the, uh, one of the ways to, uh, to start mitigating this, um, uh, 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 this routing loops is by what we call count to infinity. What will happen is that, as we said before, in the exact same scenario, if router 2 sends to router 3 the information about 10.4.0.0, it will increment the number of hops and it becomes true. So now, here, router 3 will have 10.4.0.0 initially with number of hops equal 2. Then, when the route update comes, R3 will send to R2 the fact that 10.4.0.0, I can uh, 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 make you reach this network with a hop count of 3. Right? It will increment the number of hops. So, R2 will, will have to decide whether to accept this or not. What will happen is that there are some conditions based on which even if the metric is higher than what you have in the table, you may in fact accept it. And one of the conditions is that if this route update is fresh, is fresh, so this means that there was a network change and you were not aware of it, Okay, so now you can reach to the same destination but in a longer path, unfortunately. So you will, you may actually, R2 may assume that this network has become far further now. And I need to accept the route from router 3. So it may in fact accept this route with a number of halves equal 3. If that happens then I will keep bouncing this route back and forth between all the routers every time with an increment of one for the number of hops. And these routers will bounce this update back and forth between them assuming that there was a network change and this route is fresh. Okay, so we have to accept it even, even if the number of hops is more than what we have on the table. Okay, but if that happens, then the number of hops will keep incrementing, right? So, the first thing that we have to do is setting a maximum number of hops, which we say, which we call it count to infinity. 
So this is one of the methods that RIP actually uses. It uses count to infinity. Okay? So if the, if the route update is fresh, then the routers will accept it, which might cause this route to bounce back and forth in the update, and the number of hops will keep increasing until it reaches 16. 16 is an exact number that TRIP uses to indicate infinity or to indicate that this route is not reachable. So if the route update bounces back and forth in such way, then the number of hops will keep increasing until it reaches 16 and then it stops. 16 for RIP indicates infinity or it indicates that this network is not reachable. So if I have a packet coming from R1 and then I find that 10.4.0.0 has a, a matrix of 16, then this is an indication for me that it's unreachable. So I don't actually send the packet. So R1 in that case will never send the packet. And in that case, the, route, the routing loop will not happen. So this is the first thing, or the first method, which is count to infinity. So the fact that I increment the number of hops, okay, bouncing back and forth until we reach 16. Uh, the, the, the number 16 is actually, um, <clears throat> it's in the standard, it's in the RIP standards. Um, and number 16 here indicates the, f the, the, the fact that uh, the ultimate or the, uh, uh, the destination network is unreached. And this is because of the fact that in, in the, if we have, if we remember when we studied the routing protocol in 455, there was a field called time to live, if you remember that. Uh, and this time to live had a maximum value of 60. So the maximum value for time to live is actually 60, which indicates that the maximum number of, uh, uh, of hops that the packet can remain in the network is actually 16. So if the, if the packet was forwarded 16 times, then after 16 times, it has to be, to be dropped. Okay. So this number 16 came from, from the, the maximum time. Anyway, another, another um, method which talks about the fact that Um, R2, R2 here, by mistake, if we remember that, that, that one of the reasons that caused this routing loop to happen is the fact that R2 sent an update about this route to R3, and that caused this routing loop to happen. One of the methods to, mit to mitigate that is to use what we call hold down timer. Hold down timer. So um, this is again one of the methods that, that, that are used by uh, uh, EIGRP to mitigate the routing loops. What happens is that when R3 realizes that this network is down, it does not remove the entry right away. It does not remove the entry right away. It keeps it, and there is a column here called route status. Okay? In the status, it will set the status of this as possibly unreached. Possibly unreached. Okay? Why possibly? Because this, this error might be intermittent and maybe after one or two seconds um, the interface will come back up again and the network is connected back and everything is fine. Okay? But for now, I will set this to possibly unreachable. That's one thing. The second thing, I will not wait for the periodic update. I will send a triggered update. So,
So I will go out of cycle. I have to send a triggered update. And I send a triggered update with these routing entries and with the fact that this route has a status of huh, possibly unreachable. Okay? Router 2, when it receives that, and it finds that the, 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 the status of this route is possibly unreachable, again, it will not remove it from the routing table. But it will set a timer called another timer here called a hold down hold down time during this this time router 2 will not accept any route updates about this network unless this route update is fresh and has a status of for sure reachable not possibly unreachable when can this happen this might actually happen if a, a, a router here in the network becomes all of a sudden connected to this network okay so the network becomes unreachable from here but for some reason it becomes reachable from another router okay so this router in that case will send route update and this route update will propagate through the network and it will come to router 2 if router 2 finds that this route update has a fresh route with a status of reachable then and only then it will reset this timer and accept it otherwise it will keep waiting for the, the hold down timer to e, to elapse okay during this time it will never accept any route update with the same status of or worse the status as we said the status could be possibly unreachable or completely unreachable or reachable <coughs> okay so if it's possibly unreachable or completely unreachable then it will not accept <coughs> it will keep the hold down timer running okay and it will set this route update as possibly unreachable okay and then r2 will also send to r1 the route update with the fact that this route is also possibly unreachable so router 1 will do the same using the hold down timer and it will keep doing the same okay during this period of time, which is the hold down time, during this period of time, if I do not receive any fresh route update with a status of completely reachable, then the hold down timer will elapse, and in that case, I will declare, I will declare this route as completely unreachable, and I can remove it from the table. In that case, it will be removed from here, and from here, and from here, after the whole downtime. Okay? So, <clears throat> so during this whole downtime, if R1 wants to send a packet, it will consult the routing table. Routing table tells it this route is possibly unreachable, so the packet will A. The packet in that case will be forwarded, by the way will be forwarded until it reaches to R3 and R3 will drop it okay so during the whole downtime the packet will be forwarded but it will never go back to R2 R3 will drop it okay this is what we call this is what they call it um, backhaul routing but sir R3 will drop it after the whole downtime no before during the whole downtime during the whole downtime, I'm a, because it's, remember, it's declared that possibly unreachable, not completely unreachable. During the whole downtime, it's declared as possibly unreachable. 
Who is the one who knows that it's completely unreachable? R3. R3 is the one that knows the, 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 the exact status of, of this network, whether it's, uh, it comes back up again or it's completely unreachable. So the packet will be dropped at R3. Why do we do that? Because it might happen that intermittently this network comes back up again after a few seconds. So during the whole downtime, we declare it as possibly unreachable and we keep sending the packets. If this network comes back up again, then router 3 will send the packet to this network, will declare, will declare this route as reachable, will send trigger update to router 3, router 3 will declare this uh, route as reachable, it will reset the whole down timer and same thing happens to router 1. So, I keep <clears throat> things like partially operational during the whole downtime, but again, this will never cause the routing loop to happen. Why? Because I did not update the, the hub count here. Remember that the mistake that, that caused the routing loop to happen is the fact that router 3 updated this route with a hub count of 2, so it sends it to router 2. I would never do that because here the route tells me that I'm directly connected to it. So if I'm not directly connected to it, which means that this network is down, then the packet will be dropped. Simply. Right? So during this whole downtime, I will never allow the route updates to it to propagate any new metric about this route. Unless someone tells me that it has, in fact, a fresh route with uh, a status of reachable. Okay? So this is the whole downtime. Okay, so again, during the whole downtime, I will allow the packets to be transmitted. I will not allow uh, uh, route updates. Okay? I will not allow the route updates to update the hub count about this route unless the status is, a, is reachable. Otherwise, I will, set, I will keep the status of this route as possibly unreachable until the whole down timer elapses, in which case I will update this as completely unreachable and, and then I can remove it. Okay? Type. So that, that's the second method, and we can see that it can eliminate the routing loops. Again, even though I allowed the packets to be transmitted, okay, but at least routing loops did not happen. Okay? And I allowed the packets to be transmitted for a reason. Because if the network be becomes back up again in few seconds before the whole down timer elapses, then uh, uh, things are back to normal and then I can uh, uh, activate or reactivate the routing uh, for, this, for this destination network. The third method is what we call split horizon rule. For split horizon rule, this is again used by uh, uh, EIGRP. Uh, some versions of RIP uh, version 2 use the, uh, use this uh, split horizon as well, as we will see later. So what happens here is that the split horizon, it's simply a rule. It's nothing but a rule. The rule says that simply a router should not advertise a network through interface from which the update came. This is the simple rule. Very simple rule, okay? Um, so let's see how this rule can help us to, uh, to avoid uh, uh, routing loops. Simply, um, router 2 received information about 10.4.0.0 from, from, from which router? From router 3. Right? So router 2 will, will receive route 
update from router 3 about 10.4.0.0 okay and we receive an update about 10.3.0.0 from also a from router 3 same thing here router 2 will receive an update from router 1 about 10.1.0.0 and about 10.2.0.0 so the rule here says that router 2, when it sends route update to router 1, it should send only the update about the networks that router 1 did not update router 2 about, which in that case are 10.3.0.0 and 10.4.0.0. So router 2, when it sends to router 1, it should send update only about 3.0.0 and 4.0.0. It should never send router 1 update about the networks that router 1 already updated router 2 about. It, it, it even doesn't make sense, right? So this is the rule, simply. And remember that this is actually one of the reasons that caused the routing group, right? The fact that router 3 accepted route update from router 2 about a network that it was connected to router 3, this is what in fact caused the, the problem to happen, the, the routing group to happen. So here, I will declare this rule that no one is accepted, no one is, 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 um, uh, is allowed to send route update to uh, 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 on a port which it received an update uh, from this network about. Okay, so when router 2 sends the update to router 1, it should send an update about 10.3.0.0 and 10.4.0.0. And when it sends to uh, router 3, it should send only route update about 2.0.0 and 1.0.0. Okay. So that's, this is a very simple rule that, as we can see, can uh, 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 avoid one of the reasons that caused the routing group to happen. Um, another, uh, another method that uh, 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 can work for um, declaring a route as unreachable is what we call poison reverse. And poison reverse talks about the fact that um, the rule states that once a route learns an unreachable route through an interface, advertise it as unreachable to um, back through the same interface. So when, <clears throat> when R3 learns that this network is unreachable, it declares it right away as unreachable, and in that case, it declares it as unreachable by setting the, uh, the hop count to 16. And as we said, hop count 16 indicates what? Infinity, or indi it indicates that this route is unreachable. And it sends what we call a poison update. A poison update is a trigger update, is an event-based route update. It's a special update called Poison update, okay, poison update. It's like this, uh, this route is poisoned, okay, so don't, do not uh, uh, get close to it, something like that, okay. So it sends a triggered update to R2, and R2 will use this poison update to set this route as unreachable, okay. And it sends to router 1 because it propagates. Um, so... This is simply equivalent to the fact that you set this route as possibly unreachable without using the hold down timer, right? Because what happens is that if R2 receives a route update from any other router here, okay, about the fact that this network has become uh, reachable, for sure this router will send a route update with a hop count of less than 16, right? So in that case, um, router 2 will accept it, 
will set this as, as less than 16, and it will uh, get it back to normal, right? So Poison Update is, in fact, a simple way of, which is, in fact, يعني, better and more efficient than using hold down timer and, and status, and possibly unreachable, and so on. So this is a very simple way. So just use Poison Update, and, uh, and it will do the job, OK? So we'll, uh, we'll possibly stop here. So we'll start in uh, replica protocol. So we'll start with next tangent.